Hello, hello, hello everyone and welcome to another Fallout 76 Weapon Spotlight. Today we're going to take a look at one of the unique weapons you can get in the game, the Perfect Storm. It's a 10mm submachine gun with just one special effect. It adds burning damage, and you get it as a reward from the Cold Case side quest. I recently did a two-part series on that quest, and I'll have it linked at the end of the video if you want more details on it. This weapon isn't as powerful as the things I usually showcase here, but because it's accessible to everybody and can be really useful at low levels, I thought it would be fun to check it out and put it through its paces, so even though it's not perfect for high level characters, hopefully we can all see how it works and get some ideas. Remember, if you like videos like this one and you want to see more, do go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment, or follow me on Twitter, there's always a lot more to come on the channel. Now as always, I'll take a few minutes to check out the weapon and the build we're running today. There will be timestamps as well, so if you want to take in all that info you can, or if you just want to skip ahead to the action, you can do that too. Let's take a look at the weapon. So here it is, the Perfect Storm, and its special, uh, special effect is that targets burn for 24 damage over 3 seconds. That is not a huge amount of damage, so for high level players taking on high level enemies, you're not going to get a lot of mileage out of that, but for low level players, where enemies often have less than 100 health, uh, 24 damage is fairly significant, so that is something important to keep in mind. Now what I did here as far as mods go, I put a prime receiver on this one, uh, so that it gives us a little more power against Scorched and Scorch Beasts, so we can see, you know, kind of how this weapon is at its best, uh, just to see uh, what we can possibly get out of it if you are a high level player. But uh, as we go through the video, I'll also kind of point out where, you know, kind of illustrate ways where it works for low level players, where it kind of doesn't work for high level players. Uh, so we've got the prime receiver, we've got the true long barrel and true stock that's going to help us with range and hip fire accuracy. So I think that ultimately I thought that would be important because I thought I'd be using it in VATS a lot more. Turns out, uh, yeah, the AP cost, not so great. So uh, don't love it in VATS, but uh, we'll see that as we go. And then we've got the perforating magazine for some better armor penetration. And that's really all there is to it. Let's take a look at my mutations. So this character is normally a bloodied stealth commando, but uh, we're going to go full health today because I think that's a little more appropriate uh, for a weapon like this. I just kind of want to show things that are... I don't know, as average as possible here <laughs> for this type of weapon. So uh, I do have Adrenal Reaction for more damage at low health. I've got Bird Bones and Marsupial so I can jump high and land softly. Carnivore so meat is more effective. Chameleon, which uh, for my build is utterly useless and I wish would go away, but I just can't bear to uh, go through the randomness of removing mutations. Eagle Eyes for more critical damage and better perception. Egghead for more intelligence, which means more XP. Healing Factor so I can heal up automatically between fights. Scaly Skin for some extra damage and energy resistance. Speed Demon so I can move faster and reload faster. And this character has Talons, which uh, I don't really use. I don't use this character for melee at all. But again, removing a mutation is a bit of a chore. So just, you know, it's not really hurting me, so that's why it's still there. It's not really doing anything for my build, but it doesn't really hurt anything, uh, under normal circumstances anyway. When I'm high health, that minus one agility isn't as uh, desirable as at low health, but I digress. Now we'll go ahead and take a look at legendary perks. We've got Ammo Factory. This is my main character uh, that is uh, fully leveled up, so I've got that maxed out to make ammo production much easier on me and cut down on my grind a little bit. Then we have uh, Legendary Intelligence. I've got two points in Legendary Intelligence for now. The goal ultimately is to uh, max that out so that I can run Demolition Expert and Gunsmith at the same time as Nerd Rage and Scrapper and a couple other things that I can swap in and out. But uh, we're not quite there yet. So for now, I just kind of have to fill the gaps and uh, wait till I have enough perk coins to upgrade it. Then we've got Legendary Charisma. That's going to let me take more Charisma perks. Uh, it is very useful. Unfortunately, remember, Legendary Charisma does not let you share more powerful perks. Uh, so really, this is a mistake. The best way to do this is to just boost the Charisma in your build and uh, then use another Legendary Special perk to put those points back in whatever category you took them from. 
So uh, now if you're a purely solo player all the time and you never share perks, then that doesn't matter as much, but you get where I'm going with it. Next up, we have follow through. Now, normally I'm running as a stealth commando, so follow through is very useful, but today it uh, is pretty pointless. There's not much point to it. We're not sneaking today. This is a loud weapon, so uh, we're not going to be effective with stealth. We might as well just go in fast and loud with it and have a little fun. And as such, follow through is doing absolutely nothing for us today. Ultimately, we end things up with legendary endurance and legendary luck. Legendary Endurance allows me to take more Endurance perks. Namely, I take Revenant so that if I get revived during a fight, I do extra damage. That is definitely a helpful perk to have, but it's not going to do much for us today. And Legendary Luck, being maxed out, allows me to take more Vats Critical related perks. Unfortunately, again today, while my plan was to use this heavily in Vats, the AP cost on it is kind of nuts. So... I ended up doing a lot less VATs than I usually do. So we'll see. Uh, you'll see that in action. We'll see how that all works. Let's move along to the special build and regular perk cards and see what we've got going on there. So we start out with strength at two so I can max out bandolier and dramatically reduce my ammo weight. I think that's going to be most very useful for most players. Perception, we've got commando almost maxed out, uh, but I did shave one point off expert commando so that I have enough room for a maxed out tank killer and ground pounder. That's going to improve my hip fire accuracy, my reload speed, and give me better armor penetration. And we still have one point in concentrated fire, so we can target limbs in vats. Endurance is at three. We've got Radicool. That gives me more strength at when my health is uh, gated by radiation, which it usually is, but today it's not. There isn't really a more useful perk to put on in there for today's build, so we're just leaving it where it's at. Revenant is another one that today, not going to be a factor, but in normal gameplay, uh, if I go down in combat, I can be revived and do additional damage. Charisma, we've got at 7. Uh, here I've got Tenderizer maxed out, so targets will take a little more damage after the initial attack. And I've got Lone Wanderer, that's going to help me uh, just avoid 20% of damage entirely and get better AP regeneration. Also very helpful today at low health because... Normally you have low health, you have unyielding armor, which is going to boost up your AP. But uh, at full health, don't have that benefit. So quicker AP regen definitely matters. Uh, intelligence at 11. Here I've got Gunsmith maxed out. I've got Scrapper. I've got Nerd Rage for more damage at low health. I've got a Hacker and Batteries included, which are essentially just placeholders until I can max out that Intelligence Legendary perk. Nerd Rage isn't really going to do anything for us today because we're going at full health. So, uh, you know, it is what it is, but Gunsmith will help the weapon last a little bit longer. Agility at 15. Uh, normally, we've got sneak perks in here, but there's not much point in that today with a weapon that has no suppressor. So here we've got Escape Artist, so I can get out of trouble using sneak if I need to, but uh, we don't have any other sneak perks here. Gun Fu is going to help us uh, swap targets automatically in VATS. Adrenaline is going to boost up our damage as we take on bigger and bigger mobs. Marathoner is going to help me sprint and use less AP. Action Boy is going to uh, make my action points regenerate faster. So it, again, very useful at full health because you don't have a huge pool of AP like you do when you're low health with unyielding armor. Under Luck, we've got, uh, of course, uh, Class Freak and Starch Genes so I can keep my mutations and reduce their negative effects. Serendipity so I can avoid damage at low health. Again, not super useful today. Probably should have thrown something else on there. But remember that the point of this video is kind of... I want to see what the weapon can do, but I also am okay with making some compromises here. Because really, the player that's going to use this weapon a lot is a low-level player. They're not going to have all these perk cards anyway, let alone the mods and things that I put on the weapon. And theirs isn't going to be level 50 either, but their enemies will be lower anyway. Uh, there's a whole lot to unpack there, and I'm going to try and point out some things as we go through the action here. Uh, let's get into testing at the White Spring. All right, we'll head on inside, and normally we are uh, sneaky, sneaky all over the place, but not today. All right, we're going to target the head. That's going to be the weakest point. Wow, look at that AP, though. Okay, so we don't get nearly the uh, AP value that we get out of most weapons, so we're going to have to rely on some hip fire, I think, a little bit. AP regen coming back fairly quickly is helpful, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough. 
So there you can kind of see the uh, the burning in action. And uh, yeah, Gunfu's probably fairly useless here too because our AP's gone by the time we kill one thing. You can see this is not a super powerful weapon. Certainly not at full health. Uh, but we want to be able to just put it through its paces and see how it works. So there, if we get some headshots, we're in good shape. So if you've got a little bit of space between your uh, between enemies, you can use vats with this. But if they're mobbing you, uh, yeah, not so much. You better be ready to uh, hip fire this thing. Something after me? No. Okay, let's keep moving here. We're going to go through and see if we can see some of this burning damage in action. And not really. We're getting hit too fast, too hard. That one on the ground died. So there you can kind of see how, you know, if you can get something down to the very end of its health bar, the burning damage can help you. But uh, this is a little bit uh, the person. Oh, no, he's not dead. Almost dead. Okay. But you can see how, uh, you know, as a high-level player where high-level enemies have more health, that 24 points of burning damage doesn't do a whole lot. But imagine if you were level 10 and these ghouls were level 10 and their health is like 75 or 80 or 100. That 24 points would make a much bigger difference. You can hit them a couple of times, walk away, let them die. Where at a high level, that's got much less of an impact. And now we're getting mobbed. Okay, let's see if we can get away. Reload, reload. And we're just going to rely on that hip fire accuracy. <laughs> we're going to rely on that a lot. And we're also uh, using a controller. And we've got the new aim assist feature on. So that does help a little bit to get on target. One thing that would help this weapon a lot, I think, would be a reflex sight. That would maybe help with some of the AP cost for VATs, make it a little more useful there. The recoil is not uncontrollable, but it is strong. Now here we're going to have a glowing one, and yeah, he's uh, he's tough. Okay, Let's see if we can get out here and uh, do any damage here. So you can see it kind of, kind of going. Unfortunately, that burning damage, I don't think it stacks. It doesn't seem to stack on the target which would have made it a little more useful if you got 24 points of burning damage with every bullet, but it doesn't seem to work that way. That would be uh, that would be significantly more useful, especially at high levels, but uh, sadly, it doesn't work that way. At least not from what I can tell. Anybody outside here? A couple. And that's about it for the white. No, we got one more. All right, that's going to do it for the White Spring. Let's head into the deep. This could be either a little bit easier or a little bit more challenging. We'll find out. Okay, Liberators are definitely still tough. Level 75 Liberators are definitely tough. And that burning damage you can again see on a high level character. It's just not doing much. The enemies are too tanky. Um, I shouldn't even say they're tanky. They just have bigger health pools. So it's not doing a lot for us, but it looks cool. So we'll uh, we'll take that anyway. And we've got another Liberator trying to slice us up. There we go. And what else do we have here? There should be another Kami soldier down here somewhere. There's one. So again, if we can get those Vats headshots, this is very effective. But everything is effective with Vats headshots in here. These Communist soldiers are... Uh, extremely weak to headshots. So whatever weapon you have down here, if you do that, you're going to do well. Okay, let's just clear out some room here and try and get to the back. Let's head upstairs and look for our missile sniper. Uh-oh, everybody's on to me today. They've all found me. I see you there. So there we go. So not too bad with Vats headshots, but uh, really not amazing. We're putting out a lot of bullets there. And, oh good, my armor broke. Okay, so. Definitely not as strong a weapon as we usually cover here, is it? Absolutely not, but that's okay. That's the point. We want to cover them. We want to see how they work. They're not all going to be winners. So this one leaves a lot to be desired for high-level players, but remember, put it in perspective. 
if you're a low level player, look at the burning damage there. You can see it tick off the health bar very slowly. So kind of three steps for each one. And now he's dead. Okay, let's see if we can maybe see some more of that here at some point. Now that things have calmed down, you can see it ticking off slowly. So they've got a lot more health. Now I hit him twice. Does it tick longer? No, it's still the same. So it's definitely not stacking. If it's stacked, if that burning damage stacked with each bullet, that would be honestly pretty amazing. But it doesn't. But you can see... Those little ticks on the health bar aren't doing a lot for us here today as a high-level player, but if you were a low-level player and these enemies had significantly lower health pools, that would be a lot more significant. Now, let's go really challenge this thing and take on a behemoth. I wonder how this is going to go. Probably not smoothly is my guess. But we'll find out. Now, what I probably... Uh, should do here is try to get a sneak attack in, but I'm not even going to worry about it. We're just going to see how this works. Try and keep a little bit of perspective for lower level players, and you can see it's not doing much. The burning damage is not significant, and now I'm getting smashed with a fire hydrant. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Hit me, behemoth. I'm still going to kill you. It's just going to take a little longer than usual. Let's get to some safety. We'll run through these trees. He's too big and dumb to get through those trees. Let's just run away, and then we'll make our way back. Fortunately, the range is decent with, uh, with the long barrel mod, so we can at least get some range on it, but you can really see here there's no significant movement on that health bar from the burning damage, and that's because a behemoth has such a large health pool that you just really can't see it. So once again, kind of illustrating if we can put it together in our heads how... Enemies with smaller health pools will take more damage from that burning, so better for low-level players, which is appropriate because this is a weapon you get from a low-level quest. But now let's uh, head to the Fisher site. We'll take out some Scorched and a Scorched Beast, and we should see our Prime Receiver help us out a bit here. Still a little far away, and that VAT's AP cost on this thing is just miserable. So yeah, if you want to use the 10mm submachine gun, VAT's is not the way to do it. Get good with your hip fire accuracy. If you're on a controller, turn on that aim assist for a little extra help. But uh, other than that, yeah, you can see here, it just doesn't last. Get a couple of kills in, but really the only reason we're getting a couple of kills in is because we've got a prime receiver. So it's doing a little extra damage, but it's definitely not that powerful, but it does look cool. So, uh, once again, it does look cool. Now, how about the Scorch Beast? How are we going to do there? Now, that's interesting. Look at how quick that health bar goes down with this on a Scorch Beast. Now, part of that is the Prime Receiver. But uh, that was a much easier kill than I anticipated on a Scorch Beast. Being 100% honest, that was way easier than I expected it to be. I think we've got this area cleared out. Let's uh, head over to Huntersville and uh, take out some super mutants. Now, the floaters, I have a feeling, are going to be extremely problematic. That they are. Oh, good. Yeah, now I'm just firing blindly. I've got three floaters squirting things at me. That's uh, very unpleasant. So we just got to take our time. So here again, we've got tankier enemies that... Uh, have bigger health pools, so our burning damage is not really doing much for us. Okay, is that all of them? Are they all dead? Are they all finally dead? There we go. Okay, let's head on into town. We're going to start with this guy up by the uh, water tower. And look at that. That was like an entire magazine to take out one super mutant. That is absolutely brutal. Absolutely brutal. Not good. Not good. And look at the condition on that thing, too. We've lost, uh, just in this run, we've lost over half the weapon condition bar. And I don't think that's because it's malfunctioning. I think it's just because we're putting so many rounds through it. But that's, uh, that's definitely something else worth considering. Condition bar not great because you're shooting it a lot. 
We're gonna rely on our hip fire accuracy a little bit here. See if that. Yeah, now we're just gonna take these guys out. Things are getting a little hairy here. All right, we've got some more shooting at us from the hardware store. And that is recharging. Ah, I probably should have run taking one for the team here. That probably would have been a big uh, would have been a big help in legendary perks. Would have been more useful than uh, than follow through. That's for sure. Wow. Okay, we are getting shredded. Let's just get away and regroup for a minute. Well, hey, if nothing else, at least we get a little bit of danger and excitement today. We don't usually have much of that in these videos. They're usually, uh... They're, I'm usually dramatically overpowering my enemies, but that is not the case today. There we go. You are dead. And you are dead, too. Alright, let's head on upstairs. Should be one or two up here. <laughs> I love when they're in sync like that. All right, one more here. Come on, tough guy. Come on. All right, so. Yeah, burning damage not helping us a whole lot here with this uh, woefully underpowered weapon. 10 millimeter submachine gun is a cool weapon, but yeah, you got to put a lot of shots on your target. Which is honestly maybe not that bad a thing because 10 millimeter ammo is cheap to make and easy to find, but... But yeah, I do like the sound of the weapon. I like the way it moves. The recoil is a little much, but... So here we can kind of see... Yeah, the, the health pool is just too big for us to really notice anything from the burning damage. But we got him to the end there, and you saw that uh, kind of tick off and kill him. Let's actually take another look at that in slow motion just so you can see it. So there's the shot and a little sliver of health left. And now he's going to go down momentarily here. That ticks off, and now he's dead. So that is all we really get out of the burning damage. That's it on a high-level character. Let's talk conclusions. Obviously, we concede that this isn't an ideal endgame weapon for probably anybody. Does it get the job done? Sure, at least to an extent, but I think we can also clearly see that this isn't going to be anybody's choice for the Scorch Beast Queen or Earl fights. We barely stayed alive fighting a single behemoth, so that should tell you something. With that said, I stand by my feelings on this for low-level players. I would have actually loved to showcase this with a low-level character, Unfortunately, I don't have one. I considered deleting a character and rebuilding, but honestly, to do all that just to show off one weapon just wasn't realistic. I think we can get the point from seeing this in action. It's one weapon that really just doesn't scale well with your level. Prior to One Wasteland, when there were still low and high level areas of the map, you could take a weapon like this and still get some mileage out of it. You could run it at low level events, you could go junk farming in the forest and so on, but those days are gone. While I think the game is better for it overall, it did leave weapons like this behind. 24 points of burning damage isn't a lot, but if we do a little quick math, we can tell why this weapon is a good reward for low-level players. When you're running around at level 10, most of your enemies will be level 10 as well. Things like Scorched and Feral Ghouls will have health pools in the 70 to 100 range, if that. So this weapon will be doing much less damage overall as well. My level 50 version with a ton of perks only did 66 damage. A lower level version is going to do significantly less. You might be down at, you know, 16, 17 damage per shot. But that 24 points of burning damage is going to stay the same. A couple of hits on some of those lower level enemies will mean that you can hit them, run away, they'll burn and die. That's a lot more useful for a low-level player who's struggling to stay alive in the wasteland than a high-level player who has any number of more powerful choices. So is this weapon good? Yes, if you're a low-level player and you get it early. That's the key. I'd say go ahead and do cold case right when you hit level 10, as that's the lowest level you can use a 10mm submachine gun at. You also get the plan for the 10mm submachine gun from that quest, so 
you can craft a bunch of them to scrap and get mods so you can kind of boost up the damage on it a little bit. If you're higher level than that, then this isn't going to do much for you. Any number of legendary 10mm subguns will outperform this one, but for players in the early game, it can be a very useful weapon with its fast fire rate, cheap ammo, and a little extra damage to help get you out of a jam. And that's going to do it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I'll have the Cold Case series linked at the end for those of you who want more info on where to get the weapon or who just want to go through the lore. It is pretty interesting. Uh, other than that, remember as always, if you enjoyed this and you want to see more, do go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button, and leave a comment. There's always a lot more to come on the channel, and I hope I see you all next time.